Bokeh Tov Chavrim and Shabbat Shalom for those of you that are celebrating Shabbat today. I greet you in the wonderful name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I, I have to tell you guys this morning, as you see here on the back screen here, the famous painting here. I'm not sure who actually did this painting about uh, when Pilate is judging Jesus. The Holy Spirit came in this morning. I was reading this story here in the Bible, and the Lord began to reveal to me the things that are, are regarding uh, Pilate, and uh, not just Pilate, but Herod. The, 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 as, as I've kind of titled the video, you're seeing, once again, the stage is being set for the greatest trial of the century. And all the players are nearly in place now. Uh, and what the Lord has revealed to me this morning, I want to share with you these things. It's very lengthy. I pray you'll be patient with me as I bring this out. You will see things unfold. You will see prophecies that are already being fulfilled. You will again, yet again, you will see uh, also prophecies that are in the making. You're going to see who will be involved in building the third temple. You will actually know who's going to be involved in this. Uh, you will see what is going to happen to the two witnesses. You will find out who will judge and actually execute them. Who will stand by and do nothing about it. You're going to see prophecy fulfilling itself as well as prophecy that is in the near future and how to know what those prophecies will be and how they will fulfill themselves. So let's go right to the scriptural account of this here. Um, I have pulled open right now the book of Luke and I will actually read from the book of Luke and, and we will begin to look at the historical things that happened uh, as, as well as the whole of this. I've written myself some notes as well. Uh, and and I'm, I pray that God will not let me forget anything that the Holy Spirit has revealed this morning, including uh, uh, Herod when he married uh, his brother's wife. That is all prophetic in the scripture there. And uh, so let's just, by God's grace, let's set this stage here. Let's take a look at the book of Luke first. We'll start here, the one that I have open. And um, uh, we read here, actually, it's actually in, still in the stage of, of seeing it. Let's, let's actually open this one up. I'll pull down this here because I wanted to look at several different things. And a whole multitude of them arose and led him unto Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We found this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar, saying that he himself is Christ, a king. See, now there, 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 there's a lot of false accusation in here. Now notice, though, let's start off with the first type of insight here. They're, they're bringing him before to be judged, and they say that he, uh, that he is forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. Now, this is exactly one of the things the two witnesses will actually do, and I'll refer to it from here on out, the witnesses uh, that, that are coming on the earth here. But these witnesses, they're coming, they are against Rome. They are against uh, giving tribute to Caesar. Uh, now, I'm not speaking about the text because we know that Yeshua says, given to Caesar is what Caesar's give to God what is God. But they are against Caesar, period, the Roman hierarchy that is ruling the world today, the, new, the Roman kingdom, the popes of Rome. They are against it completely, 100%. And Pilate asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest... Thou sayest it, then said Pilate to the chief priest and to the people, I find no fault in this man. And they were the more fierce, saying, He stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged into Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was, a, was at Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod was, was, uh, saw Jesus, he was exciting, exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him do for, for of a long season, because he had heard many things of him and hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned within him in many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. 
And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. Now, several things. This is a lot of information. And as the Holy Spirit has revealed this to me this morning, it takes time for me to bring this out. It's easier when God reveals something. It's harder to actually bring it out to you the way it's been revealed. I want you to notice, though, his Roman soldiers were about him. Now, you are going to see prophecy fulfilled. This, the whole stage is being reset again. This is why the two witnesses are killed. Their dead bodies lay in the street for three and a half days, not suffering them to be put in graves. Why? Because Yeshua was the one put into a grave. He was the one that rose again. This time, God leaves their bodies in the streets or allows it to happen so that when they come and preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Yeshua, the world will have no excuse. CNN, uh, all these world media outlets, uh, Arut Shiva, uh, BBC, everyone will cover their death and see their dead bodies laying in the streets. They show it already now. Even when the Palestinians are killed or the Jews are killed, they show the images of them laying in the street. It's no different. They're going to show it, but the world will not be able to reject. They have witnessed the resurrection when their bodies are raised up. Okay, now, what do we have here, though? The Roman soldiers. The United Nations is Rome's soldiers, the UN forces. This is what Rome controls, and they're made up of all the militaries around the world that are part of the NATO alliance. There is going to be a UN force in Jerusalem. All right? Now, Herod is typed out today by none other than Mahmoud Abbas. All right? Mahmoud Abbas, and, and, and when I say this, keep in mind, the leadership may change as the stage is fully set. We see Prime Minister Netanyahu right now, like a king of Israel, but cannot do anything about it. He has no power to do anything, according to Micah's prophecy. But someone is also going to be the governor of Judea and Samaria. Pilate, by the way, was the governor of Judea, Samaria, and Edomia. So I'm wondering, when they divide the city in Jerusalem, because I can't say for sure that it'll be one of the prime ministers of Israel that will actually be this prefect, so to speak. But it could be. But I'm also wondering, are they going to have two different leaders once the West Bank is uh, brought in as part of, uh, uh, or a separate state, then if Mahmoud Abbas is in, in place there, he will be like Herod. Now, if you know anything about the historical side of Herod, Herod actually also ruled over Galilee, Tiberias. So we do know that the whole Golan is going to go back under Arabic control. Now, whether or not it's going to be considered Syria controlling that area or whether they're going to give the Golan once the Golan is lost in a war here uh, and give that as part of the territory of the West Bank, he may only get up to, the, to, to Tiberias. But nonetheless, Herod was over this particular area. And also, Herod had married his brother's wife. And John the Baptist condemned him for marrying his brother's wife. Now, that's interesting in itself that he marries his brother's wife because this is the Roman marriage. And what is it? You have to remember, the Arabs are Muslim. They are the Palestinian people that are, are so-called Palestinians. They are Muslims. And also, Herod was appointed as a prefect by Rome. They called him King Herod. He was over... Judea, Samaria, he was over Tiberias, the Golan, those areas there. Uh, and, and of course, his, his territory kind of intermingled along with Pilate's. Pilate was over Jerusalem, more or less, and the surrounding areas there. But Herod was the king, and also, this says, of Persia. He was given that area as well. And Iranians are actually very much in an agreement with backing Mahmoud Abbas and are willing to use their soldiers to fight the war for Mahmoud Abbas, these so-called Palestinians. So we are seeing the repeat of, of history. Mahmoud Abbas is no doubt a type of 
Herod years ago. And yes, he did marry his brother's wife. I say brother, why? Because it was the Vatican that created the, the Muslim religion to begin with. Back around the uh, 5th, 6th century there, they created the Muslim religion with Muhammad. And of course, what has Abbas done? He has married in amongst the Palestine are amongst the Roman Catholic Church. He brought them in. It's his brother's wife. Why? Because the religions are related. It's mother, daughter, brother, sister, so to speak. And yes, he is married in amongst that right there. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, though, if you look at the Jewish people today, and you go back and let's say, for example, Pilate, Pilate's wife was very concerned about the events and suffered many things in a dream regarding Jesus. All right? Now, she is actually a type of the Christians today that stand with Israel, that know that when the two witnesses come, they're expecting them to come. They don't want to see any evil happen to them. But unfortunately, most of the churches have married into the Roman Catholic Church her family history is from the Romans. Where do you think Pontius Pilate come from? He come from Rome. Or excuse me, the Roman Empire, according to historical documentation. He was from the Roman Empire and was appointed over this area there. So again, I cannot say whether or not a prime minister of Israel will play that part or not. But nonetheless, it could be. Then again, it may be another uh, or, or maybe a sympathizer to the Palestinian agenda. It could be, it could be anything. We, we have no idea for sure. You know, I have a feeling, though, it'll probably be a prime minister of Israel that will actually be appointed once the country is divided, the war is over, but what will it be? It will be one that is married to Rome. A Roman. And we see that Israel, Shimon Perez made the marriage with Rome as well. That's interesting in itself. Shimon Perez, like his forefather Ahab, brought Jezebel, the idolatrous religion, into Israel. And it was Shimon Perez that married the Vatican, the Catholic Church, and has allowed idolatry to flourish in Israel. That's also allowed the dividing of the land. It has also allowed the Palestinians to become strong as well in this area. And by the way, you may not know this, but the Palestinian people, or in this case here, Herod was an Arabic man. Although he was appointed by Rome, he was an Arabic man, and his ge genetic roots, you can look this up online, it's easy to find, his genetic roots was, was mixed between Edomia, or the Edomites, Esau's children and the Arabs. So he was also a descendant of the Arabs. And we know historically, or not historically, but we know that from the research, they say that the Palestinians also have a trace of the Jewish bloodline in them. Well, of course they do. They come from the same bloodline, the same father. You see, Isaac and Rebekah had Esau and Jacob, but Esau married in amongst the Arabs. And so, yes, today, the so-called Palestinians do have Jewish roots. They have ties to Abraham. This is why they also claim Abraham as their father. But you have to remember, they're also genetically tied to the Romans because they are Edomians. But the difference was, was Herod was born of the Arab race with an Edomian bloodline. So they're all tied together in, 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 in all these things coming to pass. Now, as I read this scripture this morning and the Holy Spirit began to deal with me and the Holy Spirit is dealing with me all morning about this, that the stage is being set. Now, let me back up a little bit historically for you. Before Herod, King Herod came in, or Herod Antipas as he's also called, his father was Herod the Great. And Herod the Great, if you remember, who was over this whole region, also was the one who killed the children looking for the Savior. When the, when the wise men from the east came in and they said that a king had been born, he was not going to allow a king to rise up in his place. And so he began to kill all the children two years old and down to try to kill that king. As I've said today, in modern times, 
What have they done? They legalized abortion. What for? They were looking for the two witnesses. Satan was. Now, the governments don't realize what this is all about. Neither do the people when they legalize these things. Neither did Wade versus Roe. But it was Satan. Satan knows that God will raise up the two witnesses. And it's not that they have to be men that are born anointed with the Spirit. And the reason I say this is because as the Scripture says, Jesus says about John, if you can receive it. This was Elijah, which is kind of interesting. You know, he says this about him, and the Mount Transfiguration happens after the death of John. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because John, while he was here, he was Elijah in the flesh. Anointed of the Spirit, however you want to call it, that's what he was. And when the two witnesses come, you'll have Moses and Elijah. Again, their spirit anointed. I remember years ago, the Holy Spirit, I was so troubled about that. I said, God, how, how does this work? And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that it was both natural and, or spiritual and literal. He said, it'll be the literal Moses and Elijah coming upon two men of this day. And Satan has been tri tried his best. Because see, Satan knows about when the kingdom is going to end for him. Why his reign on earth. He has, the Bible says he knows he has but a short time. Now, if the Bible says he knows he has but a short time, do you not think that, that Satan is not going to do something when he knows his time is nearing an end? If Jesus says in the scripture that or, or the, it's prophesied about him that he has but yet a short time, he knows about how long he's got or else the Bible couldn't have said he, he knows he has a short time. So therefore, when he knew the time was drawing nigh that these men should be born on the earth, he legalized abortion and he began to try. And before he could even legalize it, he did it illegally. The people were having abortions. Why? Satan was trying to find that anointed life and kill it. History was repeating itself. Everything that you've seen 2,000 years ago, the stage is totally being reset. This is why the Vatican is in control of Israel. This is also why the Vatican is controlling many of the world governments today. Because why? The Roman Empire was the dominant power at that time. And of course, they do have a Roman soldiers, which is the United Nations force. And if you'll notice, they sit back and do nothing. Mm. All right, let's take a look at some more of this. So he questioned him, all right? And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod, he sent him up to Herod, all right? This is what we find here. Now, Herod... Like I said, he was, he was already in Jerusalem at that time. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was ex exceedingly glad, for he was desirous to see him a long season. That's interesting, isn't it? Why do we find that interesting? Because if you notice, what did Mahmoud Abbas say when he was speaking against the Jews? He, he says in there that, he said, we are here to protect our mosque and our churches. You see the marriage? He's married to Rome. He wants to protect the mosque and our churches. Now, I say that for a reason why. Because in that case there, he understands some of the Christian theology. And clearly, the Christian theology is there is coming two witnesses. And Herod here desired for a long season. So they have desired for a long season, and, and many, by the way, many uh, Muslim people believe in Yeshua. In fact, it was, um, um, gosh, the Iranian leader, uh, I forget his name right off the top of my tongue there. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue, just can't think of it. But anyway, um, actually stated that, he, that Jesus would return along with the Mahdi in the latter days and set everything straight. So see, they do embrace Jesus to be uh, a prophet as well. And so Herod was desirous for a long time. Now, also keep in mind, this is something that you guys already know. Who was, who was the one that actually helped build the second temple? It wasn't the Jewish people. That, I mean, yes, the Jewish people were employed to build the second temple, but it was Herod the Great, King Herod's father, that was the one that, is, that, was, uh, that, that helped bring about the building of the second temple. Who do you think is going to be involved in building the third temple? It's going to be the Palestinians and the Romans. You know, now it makes sense why when I was at the Temple Institute and I asked the man straight up, the, 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 the man that was over giving the lecture, I said, 
uh, when will you build the third temple? He says, we cannot build the third temple, he says, until the world is in agreement, and including the Palestinians. He said, the Palestinians will have to be in agreement that it's built. You see, oh my gosh, friends, we're talking about prophecy. It was King Herod that was the one that was willing to build the third temple, or the second temple, during uh, that time before Jesus come on the earth. And once again, they're going before the two witnesses are, are, are revealed on the scene. You will have another Herod that will actually be in agreement of the building of the third temple, and they're going to build it. No wonder why when God showed me in the dream that I was on Mount Zion praying with the Jews, and I knew that there was a temple built, but for some reason, I knew that it was mixed with Christianity as well. It was, it was I knew that they had faked a millennial reign and that it was a church for all nations, but yet it wasn't the biblical temple that God speaks about. It wasn't the one that comes down out of heaven that God speaks about. Oh my gosh, friends. I mean, this, this is unbelievable. Now the photo I just threw up on the screen for you here, this is a, a painting depicting John the Baptist uh, is, is getting after Herod for marrying his brother's wife. As I said to you, what was this all about? See, Herod married the Catholic Church for, for a reason. It was to help him to gain power and control. And remember, Rome gave him his power. Rome gave him that power. All right, let me take a look at some of my notes here that I wrote. Uh, wow, praise the Lord. Mm. As I said to you, Herod was, was over Persia as well. Uh, his throne was in Tiberias. They're going to have a war there. They're going to take over the Golan Heights. Yes, we know it's for oil, but it's also for a prophetic purpose, okay, to, to, to set the complete stage there. Uh, now, by the way, when uh, Herod, when he was given the title, the king of Judea, he was given this, by the way, by the Roman Senate. Isn't that interesting? I mean, think about that. Herod was given the title of King Herod by the Roman Senate. Now, I can't say for sure what is actually considered the Senate. Is it the European Union or is it the Cardinals of Rome? We already know that the Vatican itself has declared a Palestinian state. And by doing so, the Catholic Church has already declared, they have already fulfilled prophecy repeating itself. They have fulfilled a King Herod over this region because they have declared him to be the king of what? And what was he considered of? King of Judea. This is why the Romans now and also the different nations that are siding with the Catholic Church are trying to force the Jews out of Judea and Samaria. They will be successful. Why? Because they've already given a Mahmoud Abbas to be the king of Judea. This is, the scripture is being fulfilled, my friends, right before your eyes. Do you know who actually ruled the, Gal the, the area of Galilee before Herod ended up getting Tiberias and all these re regions? It was the Hashmonean dynasty. The Hashmoneans, friends, are actually the Pharisees of Yeshua's day. There was a great, in fact, the, the, the community of Qumran, they were divided against the Hashmonean uh, dynasty. The, the Hashmonean dynasty, they were the ones that were in charge of the, the, the second temple period. They were the ones that did the sacrifices and all this. But the, but the Zadokite priesthood, they left and went down to Qumran. They had separated themselves from it because they had different opinions of what was going on. But it's interesting that it was a Hashmonean dynasty that was in control of Tiberias. Now, why do I say that? Because as of right now, it is the, the Jewish people of today that are in Israel now, the Orthodox Jews, they have control of Tiberias. They have control of the Golan. But they're going to be overtaken by the king of Judea. Herod the king is going to overcome them, and he's going to use... Well, remember, Herod, uh, Herod, King Herod was also over Persia. Who is the one that is on the Golan's border in Damascus right now, but it's the special forces of Iran? Iran is Persia. Who are they allied with? Hezbollah on the north, the Lebanese army that is fighting there. You see, 
Everywhere prophecy is being set up. They're going to take over. They're going to crush the Hashemian kingdom, the dynasty that is there. And the Jews that are there, the Orthodox Jews that are there, are going to be pushed out. You see, prophecy everywhere before your eyes, friends. My God, how can you not see these things? I mean, I'm sure many of you guys do. Okay, now, whew, praise be to God. And by the way, the Hashemians were actually set up by the Maccabees. Um, this was later down in time, but it was the Maccabees after they had taken over. They had actually set up the Hashemian kingdom. All right. Now, as I mentioned to you before, Pilate's wife. See, Pilate, we know, let's, let's take a look at this passages on Pilate's wife because it's a very interesting um, side of this as well. Um, because she was troubled. Um, and it may not be. Let me, let me see if I can pull this up for you quickly. Okay. Yes, Matthew chapter 27, verse 19 is where we have this. Let's back up just a little bit in verse... Uh, um, Let's see. This was right after Judas had sold out Yeshua. He says, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Who are you then that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that, that for envy they had delivered him. Now, by the way, a lot of your churches today believe in replacement theology. I know most everybody that listens here do, do not believe in replacement theology. In modern times now that we're living in, as history is repeating itself, the eyes of the Jews will come open. Now, not everyone that claims to be a Jew will have their eyes open. All Israel shall be saved is all true Israel. All those that are truly Israel. And by the way, even amongst the Christian people, those that truly believe that Yeshua is the Messiah and accept his holy way, you are a true Jew. You may be part of the lost tribes, I don't know which one, but you are a true Israel, all right? Now, that's not replacement theology because it doesn't do away with our Jewish brethren that their eyes have not come open. Because their eyes, even Jesus, both Paul and Jesus says that blindness in part has happened to the Jews until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. That time will come to an end for the Gentiles and Israel's eyes will come open along with their brethren that believe already. All right? Now, when their eyes come open, you still have, though, a a replacement theologist there are, that claim to be Jews, like the Catholic Church claims it, and many other churches claim that they have replaced Israel because Israel rejected the covenant. The Jehovah's Witnesses claim that title. Uh, I know there are several other churches out there that claim that they are the new Israel, that they have replaced. See, you don't replace Israel. You're only grafted into the, to that tree with your Jewish brethren, and that's what makes you Jews. You're Jews, spiritually speaking. But what will be? who will be the ones that are against, that are crying out, for the death of the two witnesses. It's going to be, it's going to be the churches that hate the message that they bring. They're going to hate it. Now, there will be Jews that will hate it as well. But there's also going to be Jews that will, their eyes will come open and they will recognize it truly that Yeshua was indeed the Messiah. Why? Because they bring them the gospel that matches what they know to be the truth by the prophets. But this time, it will be the other way around. Let's notice what it says here. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called the Christ? For, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And it's the envy of the churches that will not accept that the two witnesses are the true two witnesses. They want the Pope of Rome or, or, or some of the prophets like Rick Warren that stand with the Pope of Rome. They will want, that's who they want to be the two witnesses. They want those guys to be the two witnesses. God don't care what you want. God will send the true two witnesses and they will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the purest form that it ever was and you'll either believe it or you won't believe it. 
And if you don't believe it, you will fall into the category here, like the Jews did of old, for envy, for envy's sake. See, the Pharisees, they hated Jesus. They knew what he said was right. They said, we know that thou art teacher come from God. But because he was against their ways, they hated him. And for envy's sake, they delivered him up to be killed. And do you think that, 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 that today the United Nations will do anything about it when they're being stoned and killed in the street? No, they will stand by and let it happen and perhaps even participate in it as they did 2,000 years ago. But this time, it is a replacement theologist that claims to be Jews, the church, the Christians today, so-called Christians that, were, that are going to stone him and kill him, and, or excuse me, the witnesses, and murder them in the streets. But there's one that won't. Let's look at this here. He says, And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called the Christ? For, when, for he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. And the Holy Spirit revealing again. When he sits down on his seat to do judgment, there's coming a leader that will be over Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, that will be appointed by the Roman government. And he'll sit down on his seat when the two witnesses are here. But notice his wife. Remember, Pilate was a Roman. Why do I say his wife? Why do I type it this way? Because in the book of Revelation, it speaks about the daughters of Rome or the churches that have come out of her. There are true Christians out there that your church may be married into the Roman ideology or they have been forced to marry into it, but there are true Christians like Pilate's wife was a true woman that said, have nothing to do with this just man for I've suffered many things in a dream. Many of you, God deals with you in dreams. But perhaps you go to the Baptist, perhaps you go to a Pentecostal church or something, and perhaps your church is married unto Rome, which makes you married unto Pilate. But in your heart, you know that the two witnesses are coming and you will stand for them as well. And you will say to the church, have nothing to do with it. You will write your husband who may be the pastor of your church or to the Catholic church, the Pope of Rome and say, leave them alone. Don't have anything to do with them. They're called of God. History will repeat itself. <sighs> My gosh, friends. We are living in a serious time. The word of God is being set up. As I said to you, they're going to build a third temple. I've always said that it would be on the Temple Mount next to the Dome of the Rock. There was a Muslim cleric. I showed you the video not long ago. Let me just see if I happen to have this video still. Maybe I do. And this Muslim cleric, yes I do, I believe, I believe this is it right here. Okay, let's open it up so you can see this as well. At the Al-Aqsa Mosque, a preacher, Jews, he says, the children of Israel will be forced. They will not concede. They will be forced to change their plans, to build the temple inside the structure of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. See, they got to change their plans. Now, let me just pause it right here. This is what this cleric is saying. He calls it a temple of heresy to worship the devil. Why? Now, he says they're going to be forced to change their plans because they're going to build that temple not in the Al-Aqsa Mosque. He says, we'll have to build it outside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. That's exactly right. The Palestinians will come into an agreement with this to allow it to be done. And a temple of heresy to worship the devil. Why? He says. He's right. Many of you already know this is where the Antichrist will do his ruling at. Again, like Herod that built it years ago. And Jesus did preach in that temple as well. 
but it was not, it was physically built by the Jews. Today, it'll physically be built by the Jews once again. They've drawn the plans for it, prophecy being fulfilled, in Revelation 11, where God says, uh, given, they given, uh, John was given a, a reed likened to a rod. He said, measure the temple, measure the altar, but leave out the outer court. It's given to the Gentiles. What did he mean by that? They're drawing the plans, the measuring stick. They're drawing the plans. They've already drawn the plans. They're going to build it beside the, the dome of the rock. Leave out the outer court. The outer court is where the Al-Aqsa Mosque will be, as the dome of the rock, as they call it. It is the court of the Gentiles. It's given to the Gentiles. But it's still Herod, the Roman prefect, who Herod the Great, by the way, he's not Herod, King Herod, that was his son. But remember, Herod the Great is an Arab with Edomite descent, Esau's children, just like the Romans are Esau's children with Arab descent. Oh my God, friends. Prophecy is being fulfilled all around you. I trust and pray that your eyes will be open. As we close here, let me just, on this Shabbat here, if you believe in this type of a ministry, stand with us and support this ministry. There's not many that are willing to do that. Also, and one other thing that's very important, by the way, you can go to israelreturns.com. We have a place to donate there, or you can mail it to us directly here in Europe in the Czech Republic where our main office is. We spend a great deal of time in Israel, but I prefer to use our European address because it's always constant. We are going to change it to a post office box in the very near future, but nonetheless, you can still, we can still get mail, mail at our uh, Prague address in the Czech Republic. Uh, if you prefer to do online, you can do so as well. It's easy to do online as well there. Um, one other thing, though, that's very important. There is a sister. Sister, you emailed me recently. I forget if it was your granddaughter or your daughter that has, uh, well, let me just say she's very sick, and you asked me to pray for her. I asked you for her phone number you emailed it to me. As I was catching up emails the other day, somehow or another, I think I deleted it. I can't seem to find that email. My precious sister, please email me again. I desperately want to pray for this young lady. And those that are listening, this girl is very sick and needs prayer. Remember her in prayer, would you? God bless you. Shalom and good evening. Shabbat shalom for those that are celebrating the Sabbath.